Well, hello and welcome to the uh, PFA Player of the Year video from Let's Talk Sport. And we are here today, Jamie Davis, Joe Stanley and Connor Porter as a Let's Talk Sport extra as we will look at who we want to win the PFA Player of the Year. The nominations are in and it's Kevin De Bruyne of Manchester City, uh, David De Gea, the man between the sticks for Manchester United, the uh, goal scoring machine of Harry Kane, Mo Salah, who's even a bigger machine than Harry Kane in front of goal this season, Leroy Sané and the creative player and the genius that is David Silva. I mean, I think we all know who our top two is. I mean, my top two are Kevin De Bruyne, but above him, it's Mo Salah. Um, the reason why is because he's been incredible this season, you know, after a few years away from the Premier League. Didn't exactly go as planned for Chelsea in his spell there under Jose Mourinho. But he's come back and he's scoring nearly 40 goals, at least in all competitions. It's incredible. And this is this is stats that Cristiano Ronaldo would do in one season for United. And even beyond that, Alan Shearer or even Thierry Henry. So for my for that, it's that that's the recognition he deserves. Um, and I think PFA goes to him. Joe Stanley, you are a Liverpool fan. Yep. Who are you going for to win the award? It's not going to be a surprise, is it? Let's be honest. 40 goals so far this season. <clears throat> I didn't know Kevin De Bruyne scored 40 goals. Yeah, that was a, that's incredible. <laughs> he did that invisibly, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> He's obviously the, the key man in the Liverpool side. It's Mo Salah running down the wing. <laughs> running down the wing. Well, that was certainly... The Egyptian his, king. The Egyptian king. He really is the king of Egypt at the moment. Um, but... I mean, he's been incredible. I mean, as you know, saying you as a Liverpool fan, share your feelings about it. It's, it's, you just run, run out of words to describe this guy, Mo Salah. So the person, he plays his heart out. It's all about the team with him. He's been asked recently, "What would you prefer, the Golden Boot or the Champions League?" And he's turned around and said, "I don't think about individual awards. I think about the team. The Champions League is my goal this season." But you think about, it, he's a selfless player. Because I believe he's voted for De Bruyne and De Bruyne's voted for him. So they're both selfless in that respect and they need huge respect for that. Salah has worked very hard for Liverpool this season. He's played on the wing. To you think about the 40 goals in all competitions, 30 in the league as we do this video. But a winger, a winger is absolutely brilliant. And then obviously he's set up a few as well. He's been an instrumental part. He even tracks back. It's, it's his overall game is fantastic. Mm. Obviously, at Chelsea he struggled. He didn't get the game time under Bavi and completely different tactics as well. He's come to Liverpool under Klopp. People questioned the transfer. He was quoted as another quadrado. And then he's turned up at Liverpool and just blown the league apart. All, all right, whether he finishes with a trophy, we'll see. Ho I'm hoping he does with the Champions League. But he's been fantastic for Liverpool this season in terms of goals, assists and overall team play. Conor Porter... I mean, I, I can't. I, at one point in like January, February time, it was like neck and neck, and like I might have said like Kevin De Bruyne, just for the sheer fact that City were going on to win the league at that point, even in the season. Mm. But you can't ignore what Mo Salah's done for Liverpool, and I think the best way to analyze this award is to think what has that player done for the team. So in most yeah. Salah's case, he's scored a heck of a lot of goals and also he's provided a lot. Whereas De Bruyne, he's not scored as many, but he's been the key talisman really in the midfield to City. And then you have to think really, what would the team be like without him? And in City's case with De Bruyne, uh, they would be they would be still be a, a, a good team, but they might not be as, as good as what they are with him. But I think if, with Liverpool's case, they would be a completely different team altogether. I mean, you only have to look at how really Liverpool did with like Coutinho last season, you know, is nowhere near the same quality that they're able to do this season. You know, the progression in the Champions League, how they're keeping up with the pack, uh, or I say pack, but, you know, the top four in the Premier League was United and Tottenham and staying ahead of uh, both Tottenham and Chelsea and mm -hmm. just keeping mm -hmm. on the toes of United as well. And that's really all thanks to what Mo Salah has been able to provide. Joe said as well, the fact that he's able to cut in from the wing and to be a prolific goal goal scorer from the wing as well just shows what kind of quality of uh, forward that he is. Uh, I think it's that's the correct term to really use for him now, forward, because of the, how many goals he scored this season. You know, matching the record that has uh, forever stood with Ian Rush at Liverpool. I mean, when you're talking about that guy, you know that you've got a good player on your hands here. So Mo Salah, for me, he he deserves the award, but. De Bruyne is a close second for certain. And a quick one uh, as well, because we all kind of knew this before we started recording. Mm. Um, surely we, we all have 
okay, I think we all know who our second person is, but just confirmation. If Salah was not nominated, who else would you have gone through with those nominations? Yeah, De Bruyne. De Bruyne. I mean, yeah. the, 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 he's, a, he's, an, he's a maestro in the midfield for City, and you've seen that throughout his time at the football club. And I, I would love to, I'd love to see him really um, n- not, not really become more of a goal scorer because I don't think he needs to do that. But, no. you know, he, he, he can keep on doing his game well. But it, this comes to competition where you're measured by the goals a lot of it. We've seen it with the Ballon d'Or. It's slowly starting to look like slowly, slowly starting to creep its way in with the, uh, the PFA award of Harry Kane and Mares getting the awards over the past couple of seasons. So it's like, yeah, let's. Uh, Mo Salah definitely deserves it. He deserves it. But Kevin De Bruyne is a very close second because of how he's played throughout the season and his assists as well. It's been perfect for City. So, mm-hmm. yeah, De-, De Bruyne is definitely a close second. Joe, let me guess. De Bruyne? Yeah, it's De Bruyne second place. Obviously, Connor's said he's a fantastic player and all that. Lot. But, um, yeah, he consistently performs for City as well, doesn't he? He's the maestro in the midfield, conducts the play, sets up everything, he's involved in everything. It's, it's, it's tracking back as well. His work rate's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's a he's a game changer. By as soon as he a, com- as soon as he comes to City, people like laughed at the fifty odd million pound fee. But oh, it's nothing now. It's, it's nothing because <laughs> what he's contributed over the last three years, and obviously he's grown as a player since being at City. And this season he's been fantastic. He scored key goals. He set up key goals. He's involved in everything. So he's one of those. He's close second, but obviously Magic Mo takes it. So Magic Mode takes it. That's what we think here at the Let's Talk Sport on Callan 105 FM. Um, Thank you very much for watching and subscribe.